Welcome to this Tutor to You Sociology topic video looking at global development, focusing on aid. What is aid? Well, aid, which is often referred to as official development assistance, is the transfer of resources from the developed world to the developing world. It can take many different forms and can be administered by different agencies of development. Aid can be grants or gifts that do not have to be repaid, often given in humanitarian or emergency circumstances. Another more common form of aid is interest-bearing loans, and this has to be repaid and these are administered by different agencies depending upon the type of aid that has been given. The types of aid below are the more common forms of aid given. Bilateral aid is aid that is given directly from one nation to another. Now this often occurs between nations that have a historical legacy, such as former colonies. For example, up until recently, Britain gave official development aid assistance to India until it became one of the newly industrialised powerhouses. A second type of aid is multilateral aid, and this takes the form of payments from one nation to an administrative body, such as the IMF or the World Bank, who then will distribute these revenues based upon the need of individual nations, usually those in the developing world. A third form of aid is humanitarian aid, which can be from nation states or from collections from the public. It can also be administered by non-governmental organisations who will collect this money and use it for charitable purposes in times of great need, for example after the Sri Lankan tsunami in 2004. Finally, aid can also take the form of loans from banks and other commercial businesses, and these are interest-bearing and require repayment at market rates. So who administers aid? Well, approximately 70% of aid received by the developing world is given directly by nations in the developed world through bilateral aid to nations in the developing world. Other forms of aid, such as multilateral aid, are administered by international governmental organisations or IGOs, for example, the IMF and the World Bank. The World Bank lends specifically for development projects such as hydroelectric dams and power plants whereas the IMF does not lend for a specific purpose. A further body that administers aid is non-governmental organisations or NGOs. This is charities, foundations and trusts who are largely involved in humanitarian projects such as wide-scale immunisation, healthcare and education. But these do also work on behalf of nation states and receive funding from those, as well as from public donations. Well, why is aid needed? Well, the reasons for aid are complex and non-exhaustive, but some of the reasons aid is given are listed below. Firstly, for humanitarian causes, things like droughts, famines and other natural disasters. Secondly, aid is given as a form of trade liberalisation to enable free trade between donor nations and those in receipt of the aid. This is often reinforced through the imposition of structural adjustment policies which require those receiving aid to reduce import tariffs, privatise their state services and encourage overseas investment. Aid can also have an ideological purpose, and certainly in the early years of development assistance, both the West and the former Soviet Union utilised aid in order to encourage nations to conform to their ideological position. And this has continued following the fall of communism, with aid often being used to, for support in global conflicts. Aid is also used to stimulate the donor economy through what's called Tide Aid. Tide Aid is aid that is given on the condition that it is spent in the donor nation. It's a very common form of aid and it forces developing nations to select how their aid will be spent from a list of approved suppliers and industries in the donor nation. Now here we have some examples of where aid has been used as an ideological tool. Aid is often used to coerce nations into providing their assistance in global conflicts. Most notably, during the War on Terror in the early part of the 21st century, Egypt was one of many nations awarded aid for their support of the US. And it's not just Western nations. Russia too has given aid to Syria in return for allowing Russian naval bases in the Mediterranean, which has also assured support from Russia for the Syrian government during the ongoing conflict in the region. 
Furthermore, aid that was given to Iraq and Afghanistan during the War on Terror enabled the privatisation of state services in both nations, allowing Western companies to set up in the region and profit from the rebuilding of those nations, which can be seen to link in to neoliberal ideology. The UN recommends that nations spend around 0.7% of their gross national income on aid, and while this figure may seem to be a low percentage, nations such as the UK have struggled up until recently to fulfil its requirements. Not until 2014 did the UK hit the aid target of 0.7%, and it's been recently announced that due to economic measures taken in the light of the COVID pandemic, that this will be reduced to 0.5% of gross national income until at least 2025. This still represents almost $20 billion worth of aid spent in 2020, and leaves the UK as one of the top 10 contributors of aid. As a percentage, it may be less generous than nations such as Norway, Luxembourg and Sweden, who top aid contributions with around about 1% of their gross national income. But it does rank alongside some of the larger nations such as China, who donate $38 billion of aid, and the US, $35 billion each year. That concludes this Tutor to You Sociology topic video on global development, focusing on aid. Thanks for watching.